There's something about watching mega machines at work that's inexplicably satisfying. But watching them carry out precise, yet gargantuan tasks really scratches an itch you didn't know you had. From dredging and trenching to carving out perfect tunnels underneath cities, it's time to grab a hard hat and take a look at some extreme machines doing some seriously perfect work. Ponzi Harvesters The word harvester alone probably gets most of you thinking about combine harvesters, which reap fields of crops like corn and wheat. But the harvesters that Ponzi make reap something a little larger than corn. These logging machines are daringly designed to take down entire trees, and all without the operator ever stepping foot outside of their comfy little cabin. How's that possible? Well, their Scorpion model, for example, works on eight huge 26 and a half inch tires that carry the 25 ton vehicle up the sides of steep and uneven forest terrain. Here, it uses that massive mechanical arm to swing a harvester head around the base of a nearby tree. The heads the Scorpion uses weigh a whole ton on their own and contain every tool needed to take a tree down. Once the tree is secured in its grip, a retractable chainsaw slices the trunk from its base. Then it's turned sideways and rollers slide the tree through the head where a series of razor-sharp delimbing knives slice off any branches. Considering how awesome this looks, I bet those operators find it really hard not to get carried away. Fortunately, these harvesters come with inbuilt measuring sensors to ensure the lumberjacks don't try cutting down trees that are too big for their machines to handle. Although with the right hands, they can handle a lot. The largest of Ponzi's harvester heads, known as an H10, is more than seven and a half feet tall and can process logs that are a whopping three feet in diameter. Now, if you appreciate the work of a well-oiled machine, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. Unlike a machine, I don't have an off button, so you can be sure that I'll continue to make the most entertaining and fact-filled videos available online. Now, what amazing machine have we got next? Koshi Megumi Gosho Grab Dredger Ever wondered how construction companies evacuate underwater areas? Well, one of the simplest and most oddly satisfying ways this is done is with a grab dredger. These machines rely on middle-opening clamshell buckets that are attached to gigantic crane barges, which are floated out to the areas that need excavating. These huge buckets are dropped into the water and thanks to their sheer weight, sink down onto the seabed. Then, using hydraulics, they scoop up soft materials, like sand and mud, and drag it back up to the surface where it's deposited onto a wading barge. As impressive as this operation looks, Koji Megumi's Gosho Grab Dredger takes this kind of excavation to brand new heights, or should I say, depths. At almost 330 feet in length and 120 feet wide, this massive machine weighs in at a colossal 7,052 tons. That makes it the largest and heaviest grab dredger in the world. Its behemoth bucket, which weighs in at a staggering 370 tons on its own, can work more than 150 feet beneath the waves. That's so heavy that, for perspective, it'd be like dangling a large passenger jet at the bottom of the ocean. But once it gets there, the bucket can scoop up over 7,000 cubic feet of sludge. And that's enough to fill nearly 900 bathtubs. Well, considering it can haul up a maximum of 690 tons of sludge at a time, I wouldn't want to be stood under this thing when it opens up. Damon CSD 500 So you've seen how grab dredging is done, but how do smaller, more precise dredging operations work? Well, say hello to the Damon CSD 500 Cutting Suction Dredger. It may look like some sort of torture device, but it's actually designed to remove muck and mud from sea and riverbeds during mining and general dredging operations. So how does it work? Well, that intense-looking five-bladed cutting head is just over five feet in diameter and is covered with 70 separate little chisels. 
This can stretch out or drill down more than 45 feet below the waterline, where it digs up any debris in its way. As it churns up the earth and sand, the resulting slurry is sucked up at a rate of more than 141,000 cubic feet per hour. That's enough to fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool with sludge every 30 minutes. But this vessel is only 126 feet long and 26 feet wide. So where does this Olympic amount of muck go? Well, discharge pipes attached to the vessel can be laid out along the shore, dumping the excavated sand and sludge at designated depots further inland. Well, good luck to any Olympic athletes who decided to take a dip in that. Colmar Rail Shear If you had to guess, how heavy would you think a yard of mainline railway track was? Weird question, I know, but stick with me. Even though they're deceptively slim, they're made out of steel, meaning a single yard of modern track can weigh up to a staggering 140 pounds. And with that in mind, how are workers meant to dig up and clear such weighty tracks? Well, lucky for them, the RP2000 rail shear exists. It may look like some sort of metal dinosaur, but the jaws of this beast would put even the strongest T-Rex to shame. Whoa, it just snapped that rail like a twig. Attached to a hydraulic arm, the almost six-foot-high cutting head of this amazing machine weighs in at more than two and a half tons and puts every ounce to good use. It grabs the rail horizontally in its V-shaped grip, and through its heavy-duty hydraulics, it applies a mammoth 1,000 tons of pressure to it, snapping it in twain. Now that's what you call a power tool. Big Boring Bertha Have you ever wondered how huge tunnels for subways and highways are carved out underneath big cities? Well, massive infrastructure projects like this are too big for one man and a shovel to tackle alone. Which is where tunnel boring machines, like Bertha here, come in to help. Bertha was a 325 foot long, nearly 7,000 ton behemoth boring machine that was used to dig a 1.7 mile tunnel under the city of Seattle. The $80 million machine was shipped over from Japan back in 2013, and the massive 57 and a half foot cutting wheel was fired up later that same year. As it ground its way through the earth, the blades carried the debris through a screw turn, which traveled back through the machine and out of its way. Using hydraulic jacks, Bertha lay a series of concrete segments behind her, matching the tunnel curvature. Once each new concrete ring was in place, the jacks could push against them and propel Bertha forward, leaving a completely sealed, nearly 60-foot diameter tunnel behind it. But it was essential that this work didn't send any dangerous tremors through the city above, so it could only slowly chew through 35 feet of earth a day. However, just over 1,000 feet into the project, damage to Bertha's cutter head meant it suddenly overheated and couldn't move. After a costly two-year delay, a recovery pit was dug down in order to replace the cutter head. Once in place, Bertha was finally put back to work, and two laborious years later in 2017, she finally broke through the other side. Bucket Wheel Excavators A lot of these extreme machines are pretty huge, but none of them come close to the sheer size or spectacle of bucket wheel excavators. These astonishing machines are used to excavate the huge amounts of soil lining coal seams in open pit mining operations. The buckets efficiently shovel up the dirt and, as the wheel rotates, drop it onto a conveyor belt. The belt runs along the length of the excavator's boom and dumps out the soil at the other end. They're absolutely astounding to watch in action. But it's not until you get a look at the Bagger 293 that you see how impressive they really are. At 738 feet long, 151 feet wide, and a mammoth 314 feet high, 
This beast is one of the largest land vehicles in the entire world. From above, it may not seem all that big, but the wheel on its front is a gargantuan 70 feet in diameter alone, which is the same size as an average six-story building. As it rotates, the 18 buckets on its wheel scoop up almost 20 cubic yards of earth each. That means in about 163 scoops, or just nine rotations, this thing can shovel up enough earth to fill an entire Olympic swimming pool. While you never see one of these steely titans filling up a pool, like some sort of glorified pool boy, they certainly know how to make a splash. Bucket Wheel Trenchers Now that brilliant bucket wheel design isn't just used to move mind-boggling amounts of earth from mines. On a much smaller scale, that efficient excavation wheel can be used in machines like this Alcon's EW200 trencher. Just like its bagger brother, the buckets on this machine scoop up earth as it's driven forward. Then it dumps the earth onto a much smaller conveyor belt where it's shot off to the side, leaving a perfectly cleared trench in its wake. It can continuously excavate up to 11,300 cubic feet of earth an hour, which is enough to fill about 1,400 bathtubs. With a trapezoidal mold trailing behind it, the resulting trench can be sculpted into a V-shape, ready to be lined with concrete to make a well-sealed gutter or canal. But if you need a regular trench dug without a fancy V-shape, then Tesmex 1475 XL Evo Bucket Wheel Excavators got you covered. Like the EW200, it scoops up earth using that huge 13-foot diameter wheel while moving at a top speed of just 1.5 miles per hour. Even though its wheel is about a fifth the size of the Bagger 293, it's still about one story tall and can dig nine feet down into the earth. So the trenches it digs are perfect for laying thick cables and pipelines without having to upheave huge swaths of earth. Well, I don't know about you, but I reckon operating this thing would be buckets of fun. Tesmec Chainsaw Trencher Now, if you need a trench digging through harder, rockier ground, the most efficient type of machine available is also, luckily, one of the most badass looking. This is the Tesmec 1475 Chain Trencher, a 100-ton excavator that has the added bonus of looking like a super-sized chainsaw. Unlike its bucket-wheeled brothers, the spiked conveyor of this excavator is set on a hydraulic hinge, meaning it can pivot down much deeper into the rocks below. As the spiked chain of its conveyor tracks chew through the rocks, the hinge allows it to dig down to a maximum depth of 16 feet. Once it's churned the rocks up, the loose debris is carried onto a separate conveyor system, which is then shot out of the side of the machine. Even though it works through much tougher sediments than the bucket wheel excavators, it can still drag up more than 7,000 cubic feet of stone per hour. And that's enough to fill the average trailer of not one, but two 18-wheelers. Not only that, but I bet it would double up as one heck of a weapon. That'd definitely give King Kong an edge against Godzilla. Chemrock Cutter Wheel While bucket wheel and chainsaw trencher designs are great for excavating wide gutters, the need for narrow trenches requires a more precise approach. And that's where the Chemrock SMW Cutter Wheels come in. Attached to a hydraulic excavator, the largest of these spiked wheels reaches over 8 feet in diameter and can cut down more than 3 feet into hard surfaces like asphalt. When the required depth has been reached, the wheel is then pulled along by moving the excavator arm or by driving the excavator slowly backwards. With a blade that's just under 6 inches wide, the narrow slot trench it leaves makes it perfect for laying cables without needing to dig up an entire road. And thanks to that large metal cover, loose rocks being dug up don't fly out in every direction. Instead, debris is fed up that chute at the back, where it's deposited neatly on the side of the road. 
Man, that wheel can dig through asphalt like a hot knife through butter. But Chemrock also makes cutting wheels that can slice through much more than asphalt. Its DMW series, like the SMW, boasts wheels with a maximum diameter of around 8 feet. But with a maximum width of 1.3 feet, these wheels can exert more than a tremendous 10,000 pounds of force. This allows them to effortlessly and satisfyingly cut through materials like solid rock and even reinforced concrete. Tree Crushers In Dr. Seuss's famous story of the Lorax, an entire forest is cleared by funny, fictional machines which look too hilarious to be real. But astonishingly, forest-crushing machines do exist, though they're definitely not fit for a kid's story. Like the love child of a steamroller and a chainsaw, these badass behemoths were designed back in the 1950s to barrel through forests and take out everything in their path. They may all look huge, but the undisputed daddy of them all was the Latornu G175 Tree Crusher. At 56 feet long and 35 feet wide, the steely behemoth weighed in at a colossal 175 tons, making it the largest tree crusher ever built. In place of wheels, it rolled around on two huge spiked rollers that crushed any and all foliage before it. It was transported to Canada back in 1964 to help clear a section of land for the Kennedy Siding Airstrip. However, it was so big it took all six rail cars to transport it, and then required a phenomenal four days just to offload it. As more manageable machines were developed, the G-175 became obsolete and crushed its very last tree back in 1975. Today, it can be found in British Columbia as a tourist attraction, and even though it's no longer in action, its spiked rollers still leave one heck of an impression, although it does make for some pretty hilarious photo opportunities as well. Amazing Armor Flex Sometimes machines are only partially responsible for the perfect work they do, as proven by materials like Armor Flex. These interlocking concrete blocks are connected ingeniously by a set of steel cables, linking them together like large, stony mats. So instead of having workers haul each heavy 32-pound block from the truck to the ground, this simple solution allows cranes to effortlessly lift the mats into place. It was this strangely satisfying technique that was used to line the low water crossings of the California Valley Solar Ranch back in 2011. The crossings needed to support construction traffic, so a series of loose blocks simply wouldn't do. Instead, the construction company purchased a series of 8 by 21 foot Armor Flex mats, which each weighed more than a ton. Even so, with a few excavators fitted with specially modified arms, five of these mats were laid down and locked together in less than three hours. Wow, does this look like the world's most extreme LEGO set to anyone else? Astonishing Aerial Saw Can you think of anything more terrifying than seeing a giant circular saw headed right towards you? Well, how about if 10 of them were attached to a helicopter while slicing through a forest just a few feet away from you? Oh my god, how come that lady is standing so close, and why isn't she running away? Despite what it looks like, this isn't a rogue helicopter pilot with a grudge against greenery. That menacing device is actually a helicopter aerial saw a tool that's flown along remote locations to trim back overgrown trees in the way of things like train tracks and power lines. This design utilizes a 20-foot shaft that carries upwards of 10 separate circular saws. Altogether, this sharp setup weighs a whopping 830 pounds and is carried about 90 feet below the helicopter, hoisting it into the air. For perspective, that's like swinging an average-sized elephant off an eight-story building, except this elephant is also covered with super-sharp blades that could easily cut you in half. 
As dangerous as it sounds, the aerial saw isn't just left to dangle around in the wind. It's attached to a mechanical boom pole that's connected to the helicopter, which can be remotely controlled by the pilot inside. With the push of a button, the blades, which are powered by a 28-horsepower engine, spin at a staggeringly fast 4,000 rotations per minute. That's more than 66 times per second. No wonder it makes such quick work of all those trees. Vermeer Compost Turner For anyone who doesn't have a green thumb, compost is a natural substance made by decomposing organic materials, like food waste and plant matter, into nutrient-rich fertilizer. It's important to turn the compost to ensure fresh air and essential microbes reach every inch of it. But at huge industrial facilities like this, how is anyone meant to turn that much compost? And that's where the hilariously specific Vermeer CT718 compost turner comes in. At 18 feet wide, this rolling rectangle has a 7 foot tall arch in the middle, known as a windrow, that passes over the long line of aerating compost. As it does, a specialized drum at its center covered in stocky steel flails, rotates around, mixing up the compost at the very center of the pile. Despite being churned up, the shape of the windrow keeps the compost in its neat little rows as the turner passes over, all while efficiently aerating it. And thanks to all its fancy features, this mega machine can process a whopping 108,000 cubic feet of compost an hour. For perspective, that's enough to fill 257 standard shipping containers with compost every 60 minutes. Now that would be one heck of a dirty load. Rotary Snow Plows At a glance, the massive blades attached to the front of this train make it look like an insane war wagon that could cut up anything in its path. Geez, that was one brave cameraman. Fortunately for him, these types of trains aren't designed to cut up people. These railed units are rotary snow plows, which are deployed to clear train tracks when the snow gets impossibly deep. Using those large, circular blades at their front, they cut through massive snow banks, blocking up tracks in chilly climates. As they grind their way forward, the centrifugal force of the blades chews the snow up and spits it out the side. One of the largest bladed beasts to have ever been built is the 1966 Union Pacific Rotary Snowplow. At a gargantuan 183 tons, this thing weighs the same as 62 African elephants and is the heaviest snowplow of its kind. A 3,000 horsepower engine drives those enormous 12-foot blades which can spin at a whopping 150 rotations per minute, making easy work of even the tallest snowbanks. But it's not a self-propelled vehicle, and being that heavy means it can take up to four locomotives to push it through the snow. And even then, it can only reach a top speed of six miles per hour. But in those treacherous conditions, I guess snow and steady wins the race. Pesem Power Plant When I say renewable energy, I bet most of you start thinking about solar panels and wind turbines. But in Latin America, there's an innovative machine promising to bring a wave of change to the way we harness the power of the sea. This is the Cope Subsea Wave Power Prototype Generator, which was installed back in 2012 off the Brazilian port of Pesem. Those two yellow mechanical arms stretch 72 feet out into the sea, each of which is connected to a large buoy that's roughly 32 feet in diameter. They look a little out of place on the shoreline, a bit like two ocean-sized soup spoons rather than groundbreaking renewable energy tech. But there's much more going on beneath the surface. As the waves hit the buoys, the arms move up and down, working a series of hydraulics that circulate fresh water confined in a high-pressure pump. 
the resulting water jet sprays onto an attached turbine, which in turn powers a generator. Through this process, the two wave arms on their own can generate up to 100 kilowatts of electricity. Currently, that's not even half of what it would take to power one standard home for a month, but it's a promising start. After all, Brazil has 4,600 miles of usable coastline that could host a project like this. Although, the thought of this country sporting a bright yellow fringe might take a little getting used to. Superior Slip Formers In the world of construction, very few processes can be as satisfying to watch as slip forming. This is a little-known technique where concrete is poured out onto a continuously moving surface shaped by a machine, like the ingeniously designed Gomico GP2400. It works by placing a measured supply of concrete in front of a paver, which is then spread, shaped, and consolidated at a specific height. Raised up on a telescopic frame, the GP2400 can stretch up to a staggering 24 feet across, while being carried by up to four caterpillar tracks. These allow it to inch forward at a maximum operating speed of just 44 feet per minute, leaving a singular slab of concrete in its wake. But Gomico didn't just build in straight lines, or in this case, slabs. The GP2600 slip form paver was fitted with a custom-built trapezoidal mold, in order to line the dipped dimensions of Turkey's Batman Canal. Premixed concrete was transported to the paving site and discharged onto a conveyor, which pumped the concrete into the paver's hoppers. As it moved forward, a chain trimmer refined the shape of the canal. On the other side of the mold, the wet cement was fed through and flatted onto the trench, covering it evenly along the sides and bottom. Even with so many complex processes in action, this slip form machine managed to lay almost 2,000 feet of concrete a day. Although, the GP2600 isn't the only canal slip former on the market. Alcon Series PC6000 Concrete Hinge Liner is so huge it can straddle canals that are over 80 feet wide. While it works similarly to the GP2600, the concrete conveyor belt distribution system on its top allows the machine to lay more than 2,600 cubic feet of concrete per hour. Assuming the concrete was about a quarter foot thick, that'd be enough to cover an entire football field pitch in just five and a half hours. Now that would certainly make for one dirty game of football. Which of these machines would you most like to see in action with your own eyes? And do you know of any others that'd make my jaw drop? Let me know down in the comments below, and thanks for watching.